In chapter 10, we test two means or two proportions. In problem one, we want to test whether or not male and female's earnings differ. We have a sample of 38 men. It yielded a mean and a variance of 49,544 and 44,174,286. The same size sample of women yielded a mean that is slightly higher and a variance that is lower. After I copy these numbers in Excel, we'll compute all these values here and then we'll paste them one at a time back into Cengage now. Since this is a sample variance and this is a sample variance, this is a sigma unknown problem. For this reason, we have to get the critical values from the t table after we compute the degrees of freedom for a difference in population means. If you click on my PowerPoint for chapter 10 and then open up the PowerPoint, you'll see this slide in the PowerPoint. And it shows this complex degrees of freedom equation that you must use in order to do a test involving two means when the sigma squares or the population standard deviations are unknown. I've copied this equation into the Excel spreadsheet already. Here is a spreadsheet we're going to use to make all the calculations for the Sunday Age Now problem. We have the male sample statistics and then we have the female sample statistics. These are the sample means, the sample variances, and the sample sizes. The point estimate of the difference between the population means and its hypothesized value is the male mean minus the female mean. The value inside these parentheses here, the value inside the parentheses, not including the square, is the variance of the difference in sample means. So we have to take the sample variance of males, divide that by the sample size of males, and then add to that the variance of females, which is then divided by its sample size. The standard error of the difference of means is the square root of the variance of the difference in means because the standard error of the difference of means is the same as the standard deviation of the difference in sample means. Next we can compute the degrees of freedom for the difference of the two means. And again we use this equation to do so. Um, the numerator of the degrees of freedom is just the square of that. To compute the denominator, we first have to square the variance of the male sample mean and square the variance of the female sample mean. So maybe right here, I'm going to calculate the variance of the male sample mean, which is just equal to the variance of male earnings divided by male sample size. And I'll do the same thing right here. So this value here is the variance of the female sample mean, which equals the variance of female earnings divided by the sample size. In the first sum and of the denominator of degrees of freedom, the variance of the male sample mean is squared. The variance of the female sample mean is squared as well. So next we have to square both of these ratios. So we're going to square the male 
the variance of the male sample mean. And then do the same for the variance of the female sample mean. Next, we have to divide the square of the variance of the male sample mean by the male sample size less 1. So we're going to divide this quantity here by the male sample size less 1. So the square here, the square of that quantity, that ratio in the parentheses, is this part of the sum and. Then we divide that by the male sample size less 1. We have to do the same thing to the square of the variance of the female sample mean. So this part right here is the stuff inside the parentheses. Then we square that, and then we divide by the female sample size less 1. Now we have everything we need to calculate the degrees of freedom. I'll move these two things up here to make it more obvious, and then maybe get rid of the uh, scientific notation here. So the degrees of freedom equals the square of the variance of the difference in sample means divided by the sum of the first sum and and the second one. Now since the degrees of freedom can't be any number other than a counting number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yada, 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 90, 91, 92. We have to convert this to an integer. So do we use degrees of freedom equal to 72, or do we use 73? We always round down to the nearest integer. And the way you can kind of justify that or think about it is the smaller the degrees of freedom, the larger the critical values. And since t values tend to be larger when you use larger alpha levels, using a smaller degrees of freedom is like picking a smaller alpha. And when you choose a smaller alpha to reduce the likelihood of making a type 1 error. So in short, we're going to change the degrees of freedom number to 72. We're going to copy all the information we have here back into Syngage now. The point estimate for the difference between the population means is negative 169. Next, we need the standard error to two decimal places. In part C, the population standard deviations are unknown. And so we just enter the degrees of freedom in here, which were 72. The critical value of the 95% confidence interval is found in what row of the t-table? Well, we're going to copy the 95% confidence level back into the Excel spreadsheet. With confidence equal to 0.95, significance is equal to 0.05. Since confidence intervals have a lower limit and an upper limit, we have to divide the alpha by 2. So the critical value for the confidence interval is found in column 0.025 and row 72 of the T distribution table. So we go to column 0.025 of the T distribution table and row 72. 
So the critical values are plus or minus 1.993. In the drop-down menu of Part C, we pick row 72 and column 0 0.025 of the t-table. And the critical value was 1.993. To compute the lower limit of the confidence interval, we take the point estimate of the difference, subtract off the margin of error. The margin of error is the t-value times the standard error. For the upper limit of the interval, we take the point estimate of the difference and add to it the margin of error. The margin of error is the t-value times the standard error. I'm going to copy these back into Excel one at a time using two decimal places. Because zero is in the confidence interval, we conclude with 95% confidence that there is no difference in male and female earnings. Thus, the confidence rule implies that males and females earn the same amount. Confidence level 95% is the percent of confidence intervals that are expected to contain the difference in population means. Now I'm going to check my work and we should get all of our answers correct. And we do.